Hello and welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host, Gavin Hatch. This week we're going to take a look at the construction and progress building up over at the Volcano Bay Water Park that is set to open in June of next year at Universal Orlando. Now if you're familiar with the area and you drive down Turkey Lake or if you take the Sand Lake Road exit on Interstate 4, you will notice and you cannot miss this water park that's being built. I mean it is huge. Uh, this has a lot done already and there is a lot more to be done but it is set to be open in June of next year which is just astounding because they're going so quickly and they're building an entire park and we know some parks it takes years just to build one attraction so this is really a great achievement for Universal to build an entire water park in such a small amount of time. Now it's not going to be a very big park, it's only going to be 28 acres, but there's still a lot to get done. And you can see when you drive by, I mean these slides have been just going up quickly and they are huge and there's a lot of them and there's a lot more to come. So it's really exciting and I love how when you are driving down Turkey Lake or you drive by on I-4, you get a great view um, of the resort so it's it's really cool so let's take a closer look here we're going to start at the entrance uh, these shots that were taken uh, were taken from the Cabana Bay Beach Resort which is right next door and Cabana Bay Beach Resort is actually going to be getting an expansion and two towers will be put in um, at the end of the two towers that they have already uh, so there will be a round kind of like a round building added on to Cabana Bay so guests will be able to stay there and they, ha they will have the best view without a doubt of this water park they're going to be looking right over it and guests from inside the park will be, be able to see these towers and the hotel but it will all be themed together so uh, I think that's going to be so so cool now, as most of you know, Wet n Wild is currently owned by Universal Orlando. That land was actually purchased by Comcast whenever they took over Universal. So that's no longer leased land. That is theirs, and they can do whatever they want with it. Wet n Wild for years, you know, of course, there's been rumors of it being torn down and rebuilt and, you know, kind of having better theming that kind of goes along with the Universal brand because they didn't create Wet n Wild. That was there before they purchased it. So they are just going to go ahead and level that land, probably. Um, and not use that for another water park. That will be gone entirely. The last day of operation for Wet n Wild will be December 31st of this year, so you can hang out there New Year's Eve and be there for one last splash, as they're calling it. Um, and then Volcano Bay is set to open uh, June 1st. Now, if you've been to Wet n Wild, you, you'll notice that it's not like Disney water parks at all. It's very different. It's more just, you know, your standard slides that are great, um, but they're not really, there's no immersive theming. There's no storytelling going on throughout the entire park. It's mainly just when you're at each slide and not even all those slides are themed and have a story, but they are still great attractions, don't get me wrong. But Volcano Bay will be completely different. It will be totally immersive. It's like going into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. When you're in that land, you don't think of anything else. You don't see anything else from outside that land and other areas of the parks. It's all right there and everything ties together. So this park is gonna do just that, very similar to of course, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, but I think they're going to take it to the next level, that's for sure. For inspiration, the Universal Creative Team traveled around the world visiting water parks and tropical resorts. They went to Bali, the Middle East, Europe, and all across the United States different water parks. And from there, that's what they used to start designing what they wanted Volcano Bay to be. Universal Creative said Volcano Bay will be transporting you to a lush tropical oasis inspired by the Pacific Isles. Every step while you're there will be filled with thrills, indulgence, and rejuvenation. Now, I love going to water parks, I really do, but of course when you're there, there are some things that get pretty annoying while you're there that you don't have to experience in theme parks, such as the long lines with no shoes on, so you're standing on hot concrete that kind of burns your feet here and there, so that gets annoying really quick, I hate those long lines. Also, you have to carry your inner tube from the bottom of the slide up to the top if you're going to be going down a slide that requires an inner tube, so that usually gets heavy depending on how many people are going to be sitting on it, so it's sometimes a group effort, especially with family raft rides. And I feel like you do a lot more walking in water parks compared to the theme parks because, face it, if you need something from the store or if you're hungry, they keep everything usually up in the front of the park and not throughout the park. Most of the time, not everything is up in the very front, but I mean, you do have to go up there to get some stuff. But this park will be completely different with all those things. So they're not going to be having long lines. They're going to eliminate lines and they're going to be using something new, a new way of doing queuing and waiting for attractions. No details on that have been released yet, but there's lots of you know ideas out there of how it's going to work, and they've been doing testing um, over at Wet n Wild for months now. Um, so they've been doing like virtual queuing and things like that over at Wet n Wild, and just kind of figuring out the best way of doing this. But there will be technically 
no queuing at this new water park. Also, you don't have to carry your rafts around. They're going to be developing systems and ways for the rafts to be at the top of the slide, so you don't have to walk around the park or wait in line carrying those rafts. So that will be really cool. Now also, the amenities like dining and shopping will be all throughout the park. So if you want to get something to eat, there's going to be multiple different locations throughout the park. And as well as if you need to get more sunscreen or just any souvenirs, they will have shops around the park as well. Now, when you go to theme parks, of course, the parks are divided in themed lands like the Magic Kingdom. Of course, you have Fantasyland, Adventureland, Tomorrowland, so on and so forth. And the same thing goes for all the theme parks. You don't see themed lands inside water parks. At least I've never heard of that. And they, we don't have it here in Florida. But this park will have four different themed lands that will have Polynesian influences ranging from Easter Island, Hawaii, New Zealand, and, and many more. Now within the 28 acres, there will be a total of 18 attractions, and Universal's already released the names of those attractions except one, and also the details of what type of attraction it will be. Now the names are very interesting, they're very, they're, they're well themed, that's for sure. So well themed where they're kind of hard to pronounce, so I want to say this, I feel bad for the team members that will be working there because I'm sure it's going to take them some time and getting used to memorizing how to pronounce these attractions. Also, I know guests are going to be coming up to them asking where things are, and the guests aren't going to be able to pronounce it very well, so I'm sure there will be a little confusion there, but we'll see. But they are creative and they are pretty funny names. Now I apologize in advance for butchering these names because I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong, but the first theme land, the main themed land of the park, the heart of the park, is going to be called Krak Krakatoa, Krakatoa, and that is where you're going to see the 200 foot tall volcano with the same name. And in the day it's going to look very beautiful with the waterfalls, lots of water all around it and ca cascading down it, but at night it's going to look like it's going to be blazing lava. They're going to illuminate it and use special lights that's going to make it look like hot lava. So that's going to be, I'm really excited to see this park at night. That is what I'm really excited for, besides the attractions. Now at the rear of the volcano, there's going to be three very distinctive body slides, and that is where the floor is going to drop out from underneath you. There's something like this over at Aquatica, SeaWorld's water park, um, but this will be different because it will be inside of the volcano at the rear. Um, so you're going to have three different slides, they're all a little different, and then you're going to you're going to fly down those slides and you are going to go racing 70 degrees down and plumbing 125 feet through the center of the volcano and it will be the first water slide that's going to travel through a pool filled with guests. So I'm sure it's going to be going down and based on the concept art I've seen it's going to go through kind of like where the wave pool area is. So guests will be able to be swimming around and you're going to race right on through. Of course you're going to be going so fast you probably won't see those guests. They probably won't be able to see you but it's still a first. That's really cool. Now in this area, I'm not going to go into detail about every attraction, but in this area there's three other attractions. One is a secret attraction that has not had any information released about it yet. I think it's going to be inside the volcano, but it is something that's going to be like nothing else in the park. And hopefully, like a first ever in a water park. And you know, some people are noticing that Universal is calling this their third theme park. So I wonder, I speculate this might be a, a non-water based attraction. That way they can technically call it a theme park because it will have a themed ride there. So who knows, I, I'm really excited about this secret attraction. If you have an idea of what you'd like to see this attraction be, go ahead and if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Now located at the base of the volcano is our next themed area of the park that's going to be called Wave Village. Now this is going to be the perfect place to soak in the sun and relax on the beach. And this is where they have um, a, like a multi-directional wave pool, so they will have a wave pool. You can't have a water park without that. And they will also have private one or two story cabanas. That's something, I've talked about this before, um, I am so excited about these two-story cabanas. I wonder what the price is going to be to have these for the day, but I think it'd be cool to get a big group of people together and really just have that to relax and enjoy the park in. So that's neat. And they're also going to have something called the Reef. Um, it's going to be just a leisure pool uh, with calmer waters. Um, and it's going to have great views of the riders speeding through that body plunge ride that we talked about just a second ago. Now the third area of the park is going to be called River Village and that's going to offer several family friendly attractions. Um, that's where we're going to have like the uh, Lazy River and this is not going to be your typical Lazy River. This is going to go in and out of the volcano so you're going to have secret caves, there's going to be all kind of elaborate water effects going on. 
Uh, for the toddlers, there's going to be like uh, the Tot Tiggy Reef, which is going to be a whimsical toddler play area. Of course, with you know probably kid side slides and different you know again water effects that they can run through and have fun with. There's also something I'm really looking forward to seeing, and I can see see it being built right now. And the concept art looks great. It's going to be called Hanu, and it's an adventurous multi-passenger raft ride that will soar across a dual wall. So that is something I, I've never experienced anything like that. Now the fourth and most exciting area of the park for thrill seekers is going to be Rainforest Village. Rainforest Village features an incredible assortment of attractions for thrill seekers. Now you're going to have uh, Meku, which is going to be North America's first saucer ride, sending multiple passenger rafts speeding around three saucer shaped curves. Um, there's also going to be the Oh Yeah and Oh No drop slides, two twisting adrenaline pumping slides that launch you four or six feet above the water at the end. Now there are five other great thrill rides inside Rainforest Village. I'm not going to be able to go into details about all the attractions today just because I don't have that much time, but it's all on Universal's blog. I highly recommend going there because it's a great source and they have a lot of great information already out and I'm sure they'll be releasing more as we get closer to next summer when this is set to open up. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and comment below. Let me know what your favorite part about Volcano is going to be. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most. And if you're going to be here next summer, I know I will. I cannot wait for it to open up. If it looks like the concept art when it opens up, this is going to be unreal. It's going to be really beautiful. And I think it's going to be a game changer in when it comes to not just Orlando water parks, I think it's gonna change the game for all water parks across the world. So I'm really looking forward to it and I will be there, that's for sure. Now that will do it for this week's episode of Photo Finds. I hope all of you have a great week. Make sure you subscribe to Attractions Magazine and until next time, get out, have fun, and enjoy those water parks.